Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem rotting oranges. We're given an m by n grid where each cell could have three different values. It could have a zero, which represents empty. It could have a one, which represents a fresh orange or it could be a two, which represents a rotten orange. Every minute that passes, any fresh orange that is four directionally adjacent, meaning either up, down, left, or right, so if it's right next to a rotten orange, then that fresh orange will also become rotten. We want to return the minimum number of minutes that must elapse until no fresh orange exists. But it might be impossible, you know, suppose if a fresh orange was actually not next to any other oranges at all, including any rotten oranges, then that fresh orange would never become rotten. So if it's not possible, then we can return negative one, but if it is possible, we return the minimum number of minutes that it takes. So you can see in this example, which is actually a very simple one, because we are only given a single rotten orange, but we could be given multiple rotten oranges. But in this case, we see that this is the rotten orange, right? Right now we're at time equals zero. And let's say one unit of time passes, now we're at time equals one. What happened? Well, the adjacent oranges to the rotten one also became rotten. So this is rotten now, and this is rotten now. Okay, now another unit of time passes, it's time equals two. What happened? Well, all the other oranges which were adjacent to rotten oranges, like these two, also became rotten. Okay, now we're at time equals three. What happened? Well, this orange, which is adjacent to a rotten orange, also became rotten. Now we're at time equals four, and this last orange also became rotten because it's next to a rot it's next to a rotten orange so at time equals four four uh, minutes later all oranges are rotten so we return four that's exactly what they expect in this example let's say this is the grid that we were given and these orange things are the oranges and let's say these two initially were rotten what kind of algorithm can we do to make sure that the adjacent oranges also become rotten and then track the time that it takes for you know each layer to become rotten well, you could try a DFS, right? That's like the first graph algorithm that most people try. In this case, it's not really gonna work. We run a DFS, let's say, on just one of the, or the rotten oranges. Let's say we pick this one first. Okay, we run a DFS on uh, the adjacent spots. Okay, here's an adjacent spot, so this becomes rotten. This becomes rotten, that's time equals two. Then this becomes rotten at time equals three. Then these two become rotten at time equals four. And then lastly, this one. But that doesn't really work because it, it took us five units of time to make these rotten. But that's not actually what's gonna happen, right? These two initial rotten oranges are simultaneously going to be making the adjacent oranges rotten, right? Like after one unit of time, this orange is gonna become rotten from this one and this one is going to become rotten from this one after another unit of time this is going to become rotten from this one and this is going to become rotten from this one and this is going to become rotten from this one as well after two units of time after three units of time this last one is going to become rotten either from the one above it or from the one to the right of it so in three units of time all of the oranges became rotten, but we didn't use DFS. If you were watching carefully, you might have noticed that the, the main algorithm we were actually using is BFS, breadth first search, right? Which is also a standard algorithm. And the reason it's helpful for us is because we don't have to finish running DFS on a single rotten orange. We can run the BFS algorithm simultaneously on multiple sources at the same time. So basically what we're doing is running multi-source BFS. And usually BFS is implemented with a queue data structure. So basically what we're gonna be doing is initializing our queue with the initial rotten oranges. We're gonna pop through every initial rotten orange and then we're gonna call that one unit of time. And then to our queue, we're gonna add the next rotten oranges. So these two would not be in our queue anymore but this one over here and this one over here would then be added to our queue and then we're gonna uh, you know, pop through those ones as well and then call it our second unit of time and then keep going like that. But how do we know when we're actually finished? Well, once our queue is empty, then of course we can stop. But it's not guaranteed that we will actually have made every single orange rotten. Suppose there was an orange all the way over here that's a fresh orange, it's not rotten yet. 
Of course, we know that these oranges are going to become rotten, but this is not going to become rotten. So basically, after our queue is completely popped, what we're going to notice is there is a fresh orange remaining. And the way we're going to know about that is because we should keep track of how many fresh oranges there are initially, right? In our case, I think there's about... Uh, seven fresh oranges, right? And then by the time our BFS algorithm is done, we're down to one fresh orange. Because we still have a positive number of fresh oranges, that means we were not able to make every orange rotten, and therefore we're gonna have to return negative one as our result. Uh, but if we were able to do that, right? Let's say this orange didn't exist. We you know, make all these oranges rotten. Then we keep track of how much time did it take us to make all of the oranges rotten. It was three units of time, I think. So then we're going to return three. So that's the overall algorithm. Uh, as you can kind of tell from the BFS, it's multi-sourced, but we're still only going to be visiting each uh, orange, each cell in our grid at most once. So we can say that the time complexity is going to be n times m, where these are the dimensions of the grid. And I think in the worst case that the memory complexity is also going to be the same because we're going to be using a queue and all that. So that's enough for us to get into the code. So let's do that now. Okay, so now let's code it up. So the first thing we're going to do is initialize our deck. It's going to be empty initially. We're going to also have two more variables. One is going to be the time to keep track of how much time has passed. And another is going to be called fresh to keep track of how many fresh oranges we have at any given point in time. Initially, let's just set these both to zero, but let's actually iterate over over the entire grid. And actually, before we do that, it would be good to get the dimensions of the grid. So the number of rows and the number of columns. So now let's uh, iterate over the entire grid just to do some pre-work. The pre-work is going to be doing two things at the same time. So we can just write some nested loops to iterate over the grid. One we're going to be doing is counting the number of fresh oranges, right? So if any cell in the grid is equal to one, remember that ones represent fresh uh, oranges. So if this is equal to one, we can just increment the number of fresh oranges. The second thing we also want to be doing is to identify all of the rotting oranges because remember we need to add them to our queue so that we can actually run the BFS in the first place, right? The multi-source BFS. So if any of these grid cells are equal to two, that means it's a rotting orange and that means we can go ahead and append it to our queue. And by append, we're going to be appending the coordinates of that rotting orange. So next what we're going to be doing is running our while loop while our queue is non-empty and we can say that if fresh is also greater than zero, right? Basically, if either of these, uh, you know, if our queue becomes empty or if fresh equals zero, then the loop is gonna stop. If neither of those are true, then we're gonna continue the loop. So now we have a certain number of rotten oranges in our queue and we wanna actually pop every single one of them. So basically we're gonna create another loop while, uh, you know, let's say we have three oranges in our queue, then we're gonna iterate through the loop three times. We're gonna pop those three oranges, but at the same time, we're actually gonna be adding uh, the adjacent oranges to that queue as well, marking them as rotten. So that's why we're creating the, while, the for loop rather than saying while the queue is non-empty because uh, this will just take a snapshot. So for example, if the length of our queue is equal to three, this loop will execute three times, even though inside of the loop, we're gonna be adding to the queue, updating its length, but this, uh, you know, the, the range function isn't gonna execute each time after that. We want to, of course, pop from the queue. And when we pop, we're popping the coordinates of the rotten orange. At this point, we want to go through all of the four adjacent spots for this orange. So what we're gonna say is DRDC, the difference in row and difference in a column in directions. And we're actually gonna create a variable for this outside of our loop. And it's basically the four directions that we could move in. So it's gonna be pairs, let's say zero, one, and zero, negative one, and one, zero, and negative one zero. So these are the four directions we could move in. So that's what DRDC is gonna represent. So uh, let's actually calculate what the row would be. So initially we're starting at RC and then the you know adjacent spot that we're looking at is gonna be DR plus R and DC plus C. So this is one of the four adjacent spots, row column. And what we wanna do with this position is make sure that it's in bounds and that it's a non-rotten orange. 
So meaning that it's a fresh orange. Let's actually change this comment to that. And it's a fresh orange. And then we want to make it rotten. So to save a bit of time, I'm actually just going to copy and paste this. So what we're doing here is checking that the row, uh, basically if the row is out of bounds, if it's less than zero or if it's too big, or if the column is out of bounds or it's too big, or the grid cell is actually not a fresh orange, if any of these are true, we're gonna continue to the next iteration of the loop because that means this is either out of bounds or it's not a fresh orange. But if it is a fresh orange and it's in bounds, then we want to make it into a rotten orange. So we can do that very easily like this. And we also wanna add that position to our queue, so that row column pair, so that over the uh, next iteration of the while loop that we can include that, right? J even though we're appending to the queue, this portion of the you know for loop isn't gonna change, right? That length was a snapshot. We're not gonna continuously update that. And last but not least, make sure to uh, decrement the number of fresh oranges because that's one of the you know indicators of if we can stop the algorithm or not. And remember, this loop was going through all of the rotten oranges and then the adjacent uh, fresh oranges were being set to rotten as well. So that actually happened in one unit of time. So after that loop is done executing, we can increment our time by one. After uh, this loop is finished, then it's time to return our result. But how do we know if we can return the time or if we have to return negative one? Well, we can return the time if fresh is equal to zero. That means we made every single orange rotten. But else, if it's not, then we have to return negative one. That means there's some oranges that we just can't make rotten. Okay, so that's the whole code. Now, lastly, let's just run it to make sure that it works. And actually, I just noticed I made a couple of little mistakes. So over here on this line, I forgot one of the or statements. So let's add that as well. And actually, here we have q.pop. But remember, we're actually adding to the queue. When we append, we're adding to the right side of the queue. So when we pop from the queue we want to make sure we're popping from the left because we want to pop you know the more recently added oranges right that's why we're taking this length if the length was three we would want to pop the three oranges from the left side not the same oranges that we're adding to the queue so make sure that this is a pop left so with that being said let's run the code to make sure that it works and as you can see on the left yes it does and it's pretty efficient so i really hope that this was helpful if it was please like and subscribe it really supports the channel a lot consider checking out my patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully i'll see you pretty soon thanks for watching